All right, video, there you go. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here. All right, so welcome. Hey. So this is welcome to uh, <laughs> Anti Gravity Detroit, uh, where we talk about black business, we get real, we talk about um, the challenges and the triumphs. We don't sugarcoat at all. And so that's why I'm really glad to have Mr. Niles. And I always, always get scared about saying your last name because you're like, man, this is not a fish. So how do you say last name? Heron. Heron, thank you. Like the bird. Like the bird. Not a fish. The great yes. blue heron. <laughs> Sorry. The great blue heron of Bell Island. Yes. But here's the thing, just go ahead. Just Gil Scott. Just think, I mean, like you know how to say Gil Scott's last name? Mm -hmm. Gil Scott. Yes, I do. Heron. Heron. <laughs> Heron. That's your, that's your, that's <laughs> your uncle, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. That's right. The seven Cousin, yeah. Cousin, okay. So uh, we are really, really uh, fortunate to have Niles, Aaron. You got it. That okay. <laughs> and we're, 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 we're all, we always try to promote and show black businesses we, uh, or, or, or community spaces that promote black businesses. And so we're very fortunate to be here at Source Booksellers. We have Miss Jones and her, her daughter Allison. Mm -hmm. Just a Janet. love. Pardon? Janet. Janet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I want to be respectful. Um, we'd love for you to just to say, this is an amazing spot. Everyone always tells me about this. I've been here a couple of times. I'm guilty of not reading a lot of books, but I'm hoping to change that soon. We have a real yes. book opportunity for you. Oh, okay. Awesome. I'm not reading. I know. <laughs> I know. You so, should still consume them. Uh, yeah. Yes. But still. I, 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 call it what it is. Don't say you're reading an audio <laughs> Don't ever tell me you're reading an audio book. <laughs> <laughs> Which, Which is what I do. I tell people all the time. So, Janet and Allison, if you could tell us a little bit about your store, if anything's coming up. We just, again, we thank you for letting us be here. Well, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, we've been here in the Midtown neighborhood for 17 years, and we've been bookselling in Detroit for 30 years. Um, our niche is nonfiction, so we have mostly nonfiction books. Um, interesting categories like uh, history and culture, health and well-being, spirituality and metaphysics, yes. um, buying, about. buying about women, books buying about women, arts, and um, local interests. Um, folks, we don't like to, um, what is it, we like to keep our edges yeah, well, a little wild. A little yes. wild. A little wild. And a a okay. little wild, so we have um, science fiction and poetry. Okay. Um, and um, exciting fiction. Prize winning. Yeah, prize winning, prize winning, prize winning. or it could just be Black Leopard, Red Wolf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard that. It's a new book by Marlon James. Marlon James, James. Marlon James. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Black Leopard, Red, Red Wolf. Wolf. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's a novel. No, is it short story? It's stories? a novel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Spec speculative. Mm -hmm. Well, we hope to do your, your location justice by you know, being frank and being open and honest about, um, about black business, mm -hmm. again, um, you know, it's not, we don't sugarcoat, we, we talk about things that are, are relevant and, and, and honest, and uh, we're hoping we do, again, do you guys justice. So thank you so much for letting us use thank your you. spot. Sure. Thank, thank you for letting us move things around. Yeah. And, you know, uh, and we got a couple books here, but maybe at, well, I'm bringing back on at the, at the end. Mm -hmm. And just to say something too, uh, so awesome. people see in the beginning, people see at the end. Okay. This is going to be recorded. So this is going to, this live stream not on Facebook, as long as my uh, phone has power. <laughs> and that tape holds up. That's okay. right at an angle. It's not an earthquake, it's just the tape. But it, so, <laughs> anyways, um, but we definitely want to bring it back on at, at the end and say right. a little bit more. So thank you thank so you. much. Okay. And you can go to your meeting now, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not calling you out, am I? Okay. Nope. All right. All right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, sir. There you go. Alrighty. And Miss Janet. Yeah, sure. Okay. Alright, so. Alright, you good? Is the sound good? Oh, we did have an earthquake. Can you do anything about the uh, camera or no? Oh, it's okay. Oh, wow. So it's perfect. Sorry about this. No, it's fine. So that is quite alright. Um, so let's, let's, let's just dive right into it. We're, we're going to keep this to an hour, maybe a little bit shorter today. 
Um, you're gonna hear some noise in the background, but that's, we're trying to show you guys a black business that actually operates. So, uh, let's well, as long as your audio levels are right, it'll be okay. Good, good. All right. You know, I mean, like that's that's I think most of the best conversations I've ever had have had books around me. Yes. Right. Yeah. So. And it's a coffee house. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Like that's, that's a good, that's a good look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is a place where a lot of people actually come and talk about uh, books and they yeah. offers to come and sit. I just stumbled in and out of three different arguments uh, with Janet today. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. So I want to get to the top, straight to the topic. And that's why we have Niles here. So uh, a little about Niles, um, uh, from my personal point of view, uh, you've been around the ecosystem here for a long time. Uh, I know you went out west uh, yeah. for a while, and, you, and you've come back. And I know that Niles is very passionate about uh, building up Detroit and helping talent be cultivated here and be put on a on a, a much larger scale. And I know Niles is very aware of lots of uh, roadblocks and, and issues and challenges that Metro Detroit has, mm -hmm. uh, particularly for black business. Um, just business and technology here. And there's, there's so many. We're, we're such a you know automotive still thinking uh, uh, city uh, that it's, it's hard to to um, to bring in new industries and, and get the limelight that we need. So I just remember now it's just always speaking up in every every event that uh, that I, I've been to. He's been a speaker or sometimes he's been part of the audience, but he's been heard and he's been always unapologetic and he's always been poignant and is always making a point that um, that's relevant. And, 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 and uh, I would say not self-serving, but thinking of, of the community, thinking about Detroiters, black folks. And so I wanted to, so again, thank you for being on the show. Um, thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, let's, let's dive, right? What, so what caused you to, to, to become, oh, you know what? I need much of your bio. Huh. So, yeah, <laughs> tell, me, tell me a little bit about Pop Dog. Man. I want to know more about this. Um, this is your new new venture that you're working on. Let's yeah, talk about that, please. yeah, new new venture. Yes, it's a uh, gaming tech company. Yes, we see many of the, so many of the people who work in esports love to make analogies to traditional sports, traditional stick and ball sports. Yeah, um, and and I think that some of those fit. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of them don't. And as a result, I think that the ecosystem of gaming, of competitive gaming specifically, multiplayer, online gaming more specifically, right. um, has evolved with some blind spots. Okay. Right? Because people keep trying to fit it into this, this like traditional sports, just digital bag. And it doesn't really fit there. That's not right. really what it is. Right. And so I. Effectively, when you think about gaming, the thing to recognize is that it's all a content play, right? There are, um, the historical revenue proposition for a video game mm -hmm. is the video publisher can spend as much money as they can get back in sales, right? Very right. simple. Yep, yep, yep. Um, maybe uh, you started seeing, like in Grand Theft Auto back in the day, mm -hmm. you would start seeing product in right. video games. Right. right, there'd be a Coca-Cola, not a Pepsi machine. Yes. In when you run around San Andreas or whatever. Um, cool. Right. right. Another revenue stream yep. for the publisher. Right. What happened about seven years ago is that technology got good enough that we realized that there was a half step between watching someone play a game mm -hmm. and actually playing the game yourself. That gave you a similar level of interactivity in the media that you're consuming, right? right? Which is the difference between a game and a movie, right? right a game right. is like a choose your own adventure book right. with a million pages. Right, right. right. Um, Stop motion, but continuous. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. So I mean, but, but I mean like, you know, when you, you ever read the choose your own adventure book? Oh yeah, book? yeah, I love that. If you want to go left, jump yeah. the page, blah, blah, blah. Right, yeah. imagine if you could. Have, All right, you're dead. Right, no, imagine if you, but imagine if you could have 50 choices yeah. every time you jumped a page yeah. and you never ran out of pages. That's right. a video, right? Right. right? So it's not like fascinating. Yeah, people you it for where we are. Yeah, 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 like yeah exactly. Like right. Yeah. So um, basically live streaming content in the gaming world mm -hmm. is the same as any other interactive media that we would participate in. Right. You know? And Pop Dog is trying to figure out how to get ahead of some of the trends we see in live streaming media. Specifically as it relates to gaming, because yeah. we see huge opportunities. And to that yeah. end, we own a, a talent agency right. that is 
the biggest, best, whatever in the nation right now right. for video gamers. So when you say live streaming yeah. content. People who play video games on Twitch right. or YouTube or right. Facebook. And then other people watch them right, play right. video games. Oh, wow. Okay. Right? And yeah. I mean, like, you know, for context, and I said this on a, uh, in another discussion recently, um, more people spent time watching my biggest client during six months of 2018 than all of the people in all of the theaters in America wa spent watching Black Panther. Oh, wow. Wow. And you got that. By, like, three billion minutes, we beat that. Oh, my goodness. And I'm including, like, I'm, I'm, assuming, I'm assuming people were there for the opening and closing credits. Okay. Right. So, so I'm like giving a lot of generosity to, to the movie goer. <laughs> and they still were three billion minutes short of my of one of my clients. And, that, and, and you I guys an agency or? We're, we're, we're a management company agency. I mean, the gotcha. space is a little bit nebulous. So right. like, we, we have the appropriate licenses to operate how we operate. But yes. we, we think of ourselves as a management company. Awesome. And so that's, okay. That's, thank you. Because that, that helped me understand. I thought you We guys also own a, an, an analytics platform and a data stack. That we pair with the with the inventory that we manage through the through the agency side, right? right. So one of the biggest problems in live streaming is it's brand new. Nobody knows how to measure it. CMOs right. from Fortune 100 companies are yeah. saying, "Oh my God, gaming! My kid won't stop playing games. My right. kid won't stop talking about Twitch. How do I buy?" And the only thing you can do is a programmatic media buy, which is really silly because nobody can measure the inventory. Okay, you can only buy ads. Right. Is what I'm saying. Right. You can't do activations really well because you can't really. You say activations like when people are. Um, I'm. So you can't do product placement. Product placement is a huge lost opportunity oh, in live streaming right. for yeah. a lot of people because there isn't data to substantiate what the reach is. Like what's oh, the impact of it? How many people yes. saw my Coke can? Yes. Which is the only way you know how to price That's what sweet. the Coke can is worth. You Otherwise, guys. everyone's just trying to shake their hands and saying, I like games, you like games, we like games, let's pay you uh, yeah. uh, 10,000. 10, Guess to me. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of, yeah, what, what is the wind going kind of thing. Right, that's, right. that's a really whack way to measure. And so you guys are able to actually Yeah, so we so we, bring, we bring good good data to that equation. Okay. Plus, top of line inventory, those right. two things together, right. uh, gives us a pretty good market position. That is very strong. That is very strong. That's a huge thing now, too. I know that, uh, I know that, um, I know you're working on doing, bring something here local, like a couple mm -hmm. gaming events. Um, and probably some of the talent from Pop Dog. And, I mean, we hope. Awesome. Listen, like, and, we'll, and we'll get into this. we can get into some of this like, yeah. uh, as as we talk a little bit about like yeah. Detroit and why Detroit is so special. But, yes, but I think that uh, gaming is a power position mm -hmm. in developing minds. Okay, right. It so, can be right. No, I mean, listen. Every parent I know, every parent I've spoken to in the last six months, yes, who has a kid who likes Fortnite. Yes. Has used Fortnite to incentivize chores, homework, and other good behavior. <laughs> uh, that's good. That means that's gaming, it, which, and, though, it's not, and it's not as though those parents hadn't said prior, right. do your homework, do your chores, and, and behave well. Right. Right? But it's about having uh, a power play that you can make. It's about having leverage. Right, right. I have something you want. You know I'm not going to starve you, so it's not like I can threaten not to feed you dinner if you don't do your homework. Right, right. That's abuse, right? We yes, would yes. lock that parent up, but we will yes. never lock them up for taking away Fortnite. Fortnite... Maybe in the future. I mean, listen, if the computers take over. Right? Yeah. So, like, <laughs> the, thing, the thing that's interesting to me is just the, the value yeah. um, that can be sort of, like, seen in kids' lives, and in, frankly, gamers' lives, right. from the game, from the interactivity that they get from the game, from the thing, the, the responses, the stimulus response cycle that you get from these games. Right. Um, that's not going to change. No. No. And you can go deeper. Exactly. Yeah, you can go deeper. Right. And, and then hopefully, and I, hopefully I, I, use I wanna, that to, I wanna to teach. Own, I want to own the data for right. how that ends up happening. So you do want to take over the world. Um, <laughs> didn't say no. I want to make, I, but I, what I want to do is find ways to leverage gaming the same way uh, parents have. Right. And the ways to leverage these new sorts of media right. in the way that uh, the parents that I'm talking about have, have done, right? Right. Which is to say, uh, the reason that I'm in the position that I'm in right now is that I started playing video games. Right. I would not be at this company, right. in this company. And frankly, prior to this company, I still would not have been where I was were it not for games. Right. Games unequivocally saved. Uh, they saved me from being a participant in at least a number of other alternate realities that I could have been. Which are not good. Which we don't know. We don't Because I didn't go down those paths. They right. could have turned out great. You've gone left. Right? Right. Yeah. 
But I know that the path that I'm on right. is is uh, is due to the games that I played, right. and the fact that I did that on a computer, not a PlayStation. Mm. Okay. So when I turn the game off, right, I can Google things. My I was right. beefed out with my dad. Yeah. Because uh, I was an angsty teenager. Yeah. And that's yeah. how that works. I think everybody is. And uh, he had a ra- he was on the radio. Right. He was on WDT actually just right over there. He yeah. Had, he had a radio show on WDT for like twenty years. Really. And I started a radio station in my basement, hmm. right? Yeah. Not really thinking it. Today, I usually tell that story saying I, I could do it better than he did. Right. In real life, I just oh, want to be like my daddy. You know what I'm so, saying? So, so like, so yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak to that as well. So my dad was an architect, yeah. and I, I, he put me on the drafting board at an early age. I know I've told this story many times on, on this, but the point is, is that at age nine, I was doing floor plans and elevations. Of things were actually getting built, and then I, I, when I got older, I was like, I got the angst as well, and I was like, man, this is boring. This is just two dimensional. I can do better than this. I'm gonna become an engineer, right? Mm-hmm. And so I became a design engineer. Eventually, worked at General Motors with 3D design, right? right? And so, but still, I was trying to get his approval, or just yeah, trying to win him over. My therapist talks to me a lot about the yeah. uh, the relationship between us and our parents and the way that affects the choices we make later in life regarding unresolved conflict yes. or unresolved recognition. Oh, like yeah. That. Like it's super yeah. recognition. Dads don't do it. Yo. No. <laughs> That's all right, but you need to do such and such. <laughs> you know, let me tell you, so I'm I, uh, I'm a writer. Yes. Uh, at yeah, least family my, at writers. Least, right, but, family right, writers, so right. here's the thing. Yes. The thing about coming from family of writers. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that love wasn't spelled in a red mm-hmm. line through something I thought was good. <laughs> so the red line. I, that's how I knew that my parents loved me, right? I knew my parents loved me because I would hand them this thing that I thought and was good. And mark it up. And it would come back bleeding. <laughs> yeah. Right, but it took you a while to figure that out, right? Or did you know that? Oh no, no, I didn't understand any of it. Now yeah. I just recognize that now yeah, as an yeah, adult yeah, yeah. that when I really Slow. care about something, yeah. when someone hands me something, mm-hmm. and I know they really care about it, and I really care about them, yes, and it, it creates problems in my life, in my right. personal life, right? right? Because I legitimately like if you hand me this project and you say I think this is amazing, yes, and I care about you, I can't tell you it's amazing until I think it is, right. Because I want the world to see you the way I do. Yes. That's what my parents were doing. Yeah. They were saying, no, 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 no. If you hand this, you, you, little black boy, if you hand this to them, they might not see you how I do. Right. That yeah. was what my parents they were telling me you. when my yeah. papers came back to me bleeding yeah. and I thought that I was shit. Right. Right? Yeah, we didn't. Yeah. Because they, they, didn't, they didn't have a different word. That was how they knew. They couldn't right. imagine. They wanted to make sure people saw my brilliance. Right. And so they needed to fix all of the things that might stop that. Yes. And that's what, you know, my, my mom's mom treated How her that way. She yeah. wanted to make sure the room was, my mom, for my mom's mom, was the room needed to be clean. Because if the room wasn't clean, they might think you're messy. Right. Or and they, they might think you're not as good as, they might think you're not as well kept as whatever. Right. And, but, it was, but it was fundamentally so rooted in this idea that I can see the sun shining through you and I could not imagine, I cannot stomach the thought of someone else not seeing you right. in the light that I have seen you That's, in my beautiful little child. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like that for the child. Right, no, no it doesn't. And I, I, I don't know. It feels like an extension cord. Yeah, yes. And I, I, I know with my kids, I try to, to, I guess I try to be different. And I, and I, I do critique them and, and, and give them, you know, um, you know, my thoughts on what they're doing. Mm. Just, just pay for that therapy, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I try, yeah, but I try very like, hard to let them know. Yeah, I, and my mom tried real hard. My yeah. dad tried real hard. My dad's dad yeah. never played ball with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My dad's dad was a Jamaican immigrant. Mm-hmm. Not the best dude. I never met him, but right. it seems it seems that he was not the best dude in terms of like right. parental camaraderie, like really right. kind of like building and like validating his kids. That wasn't his bag. Right, right. And he never played ball with my dad. Right. So my dad couldn't throw a football for it, so my mom had to teach me how to throw a spiral. Really? Um, that's kind of dope. Shout out to that's kind of dope. Yeah, that's kind of dope. But my dad still wanted to play ball with right. me. Right, right. Th- the only reason I, I, I threw some shade on my dad right there, other than the fact that I'm shady, is that I wanted it to be, I wanted to be clear, like, my dad did play ball with me. Right. He was just bad at it. Right. But it mattered so much to him. 
Right. To play catch. Yeah, he did it. Because his dad didn't do that. Right, right. He had to correct That's that right. sin. He, none of us want to repeat the sins of our fathers, we right? We do that. We do that a lot. In, in, in doing so, mm-hmm. we sometimes create new gaps. Yes. That's so true. my point right. is that continue, doing, continue correct that right? yeah. so that you can look in the mirror and be a good father every night. Right. And also, as you say, for you know, colleges and things like that, yeah. right? Yeah. Just talk a little like... Just do the math. It's about 125 a session if you don't have insurance. Like, <laughs> save up for like two years of therapy. Therapy, I think you're right. Because that like, is why they will wise. they they will appreciate right. you for it later. Right. Because you so can mess your kids up. Man. So that's that helps kind of plan black business in the future. So we're saying yeah. this therapy generational, for, generational wealth. Yes, generational wealth needs therapy as well, and that's uh, that's actually really good. Entrepreneurs need therapy. Uh, yeah, yeah, we do because we're crazy. Nuts. We are crazy. And most of us haven't gone to see therapists. Yes. We would have found better uses of our energy if we had seen yeah. therapists earlier. It's actually kind of a blessing that we didn't. Yeah, I'm gonna but help. now, yeah. don't get that checked out. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, I'm gonna help somebody market their business, and that's how I hope they'll allow me to pay them. <laughs> is to get them therapy. Yeah. So I'll get no. I'm saying I'll get therapy from the therapist, and I'm gonna help. Oh, they're get, a therapist. Yes. And I'm gonna try to oh, get. Oh, I need a therapist customers. client. Like I need a therapist client would be so clutch. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. just for 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 pop dog fee for service for no 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 service for me yeah, service for yeah. service I'm yes. tired of paying these bills that's exactly what I was trying to uh, articulate this guy's great at articulating me not so much it's a but, barter system but yes that's how, that's what entrepreneurs need to do especially when you're starting out right you yeah I mean out. I think that's bullshit I think you need to get your cred right get that I think you get your money together and pay me that's always but a good thing that's just because I'm tired of people trying to say I'll give you fifty candles if you help me with it. yeah. Like, I don't need them. Like, yeah, how many candles? I pay, I pay my candles. electricity bill. I don't need <laughs> candles like that. I need one candle. Yeah. All right, let me, let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to something I've always, again, I've always admired how you've been outspoken. It doesn't matter who's in the room. Well, you do, but uh, it's good. And it's, I found out my Fitbit is counting my hand motions. Really? I That's thought I was getting way more steps than I'm I'm still fat. That's fatter, what you're doing. I'm I mean, not getting the steps that I'm supposed to be getting. That's, that can, that makes sense. Like, yeah. And my girlfriend's like, how are you beating me? And I'm like, I talk all day. What do you mean? But I want to ask you a question. Because you and I had talked about this. And, uh, and, I, and I saw a lot of similarity in myself. Um, to be, to, to, to have gotten to where you are now. And we're going to talk a little bit about, I'm messing this up. A little bit about how you got there. But let's talk about how you became somebody that is outspoken. That mm-hmm. wears the, sh- the, the hat that says, the Black Panthers, which I love, uh, that you know that that is unapologetic. How did you get? I wore, to my, that? I wore my my paid in full. My, yes, let's talk about that paid. That's so dope. That's dope. So yeah, I haven't seen that movie, but still, it's, you got you got Malcolm it's, it's, it's Malcolm Martin, Obama. Ma- Malcolm Martin, and Obama in, yes. in the paid in full stance. It's, yes, it's the top five sweatshirt. Shout out to Loose Cannon Brandon Fern. Thank you, thank you. That just blows my mind. So, uh, speaking of that, right? right you again. Um, how did you become somebody that doesn't pull their punches and speaks well when, when not pulling your punches, right? Um, how, how did you, how did you become this unapologetic person? You said, bump it, I'm gonna just say what's on my mind. Let me do it. I think there's a lot of error, okay? A lot of trial and error, right? Um, yeah, to, right. to perfect your... Yeah, I mean, like, you know, none of, none of who I am is by accident, right? Like, I would be a liar if I didn't, Acknowledge that uh, that there is some manicuring that goes into it. Yeah. Right. But also, and I we I thought about this quote yesterday when we were talking kind of pre pre up to this. Right. Yes. It was like you know be yourself. Everybody else is taken. Someone should Google it. I keep meaning to Google it to figure yeah. out who said it, who but it's it? stuck yeah. with me since. And it might have been Mark Twain or it might have been. You know, you can tell me it'd be any number of people. I believe you. It's, it's, a, it's a white dude. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's, a, it's right. definitely like a. It was a white person. Yeah. Um, but like, I feel like I tried. I don't know if this is just what like older children who don't have like cool parents do. Right. Like my parents are like they're amazing. Right. But they were They're not like you know. They, yeah. 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 If I told them today, if I explained what it, what the drip was to mm-hmm. either of them, right, right, 
they could eventually understand it and still never understand it. Like that's I not know that. what it is. It's okay. Like <laughs> they they would never. It's just not. It's not. That's not them. Right. That's not who they are. Right. right. And then you know like I, I mentioned this the other day, but uh, like I was in fourth grade at the lunch table and someone was like clowning me. Right. Because I didn't know Montel Jordan. This is how we do it. Right. Um, Which everybody should know. Good song, it turns out. But also, I'm gonna be honest. We can retire that song now. I'm done with that song. I think you're right because it was a. Uh, it was. Uh, When's the last time you went somewhere? Yeah. DJ played. This is how we do it, and you were excited. In that order. When is the last time that happened? Because I bet you it wasn't I this decade. Don't know. I think we're done with that song. It's a lot of songs we could bring maybe back. Maybe at a wedding. Maybe. Think about. But even at a wedding. Because I think food. It's not outstanding. Alcohol. It's not love battle. Right now. Yeah. It's not any of the amazing songs that you can play at a wedding. It's but none of those. But let's find out. Let's not just desecrate it. So I'm at fourth, so yes. fourth grade, lunch yes. table. Yes. This is how we do it, which we should retire. Yes. Right? And I'm like, is that a Thelonious Monk song? Right. Is that is that our our Blakey? Mm-hmm. Blakey? Mm-hmm. And that's is that Sonny Rollins? Parents, right? Is that yeah. Wynn Marsalis? Is that yeah. Yeah. any of the people that my dad grew me up playing? Like yeah. we li- it was a jazz house. Right. I listened to gospel. I could talk, we could talk Take Six and Kirk Franklin. Yeah. We could we could talk Marvin or pre Marvin Sapp, but like you know that yeah. that genre of gospel or yeah. mm-hmm. I can talk jazz. Right. I don't know nothing about Montana Jordan. So what happened? I got clowned. Right. Because kids are ruthless. They're because kids are shitty people. Yes. That's true. Like I think you have I to think... afford children with minds all of the respect of an adult. Mm-hmm. You have to talk to them as though they actually have a mind that could change the world. Yes. And yet they have none of the responsibilities that afford you the luxury of speaking your mind. Yeah. Right? It's a it's a, it's a paradigm that they're great kids, they're just shitty adults, they're shitty people. Yeah. Anyway, so right. kids are bad. Yeah. They clown me. I try to fit in. Mm-hmm. And so I go and like learn like, let me go find this, my, this This is how we do it song. Let me figure yes. this out. Let me do my research. I'm going to come back and I'm going to get them. Right. Come back, but I can't dance. Mm-hmm. Come back. I have that problem. And too. now it's a new song. No, I can dance right. now. Right. Because I learned as a survival tactic yes. how to be somewhat cool in my life. Yes. It turns out I have decent rhythm, so it worked out. But, like, I just didn't have, I didn't have, like, older cousins who, like, grew me up on that. Right. It was just me and my parents. Right. For a long time. So, yeah, I, just, I didn't. I wasn't cool so enough to, to yeah. fit in, yeah. which means that like I always stood out. Right. Yeah. And you don't you don't recognize the value of standing out when all you want in life is to fit, fit in, in and to feel accepted and to, and to yeah. belong and yeah. all of that. You don't feel that. Right. Right. And my mom is like super fair skinned She's black. She identifies as black. She's mixed. Right. And she's very fair skinned Right. And I remember like I was seven or eight, mm-hmm. and I was explaining to my mom something happened at school. And she was like, and I was like, mom, but you don't understand. You're not black. And she looked back at me so quick. And I found, I found out my mama was black when I was like <laughs> six or seven or something like that. Yeah. I just always assumed she was white. I was like, cool, yeah. I got a white mom. Yeah. Right. Turns out I don't. Yeah. Shout out to black women once again. <laughs> Even when you think they don't, they did. <laughs> and uh, what did she do? She just, I mean, it was, she didn't have to do it. She just gave you that look. You're like, ah. Sorry. So, <laughs> You said, is your, is your, did your dad is white or your mom is white? My mom is white. Yeah, so, okay, so you didn't get this growing up. There's a black woman look back. She, she mimicked it. I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, But there's, there's a, there's a black woman look back yeah. that doesn't have to say anything. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that is yeah. unequivocally black and yeah. woman in that moment. Yeah. And I, like, it's she didn't have to say scared. anything. Here's the thing. She yeah. didn't have, no, it wasn't, it's not scared. That's scared. the thing. It's not scared. That was fear. It's like, what? There's like it's it's just a like you get caught off guard moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't. I, my mom didn't have to tell me anything right. after that. I don't really think. I don't, I don't remember her saying so, anything. I just remember that look back, and I was like, okay, I'm my bad. That's me. So that's, so that's, that's, that's me. I fucked that up. So you so but let's, let's back to you. So you uh, thought that of your mom, and she corrected you, but that still made you feel like an outsider, or no, no, no. I just mean you? like in school in general. Yeah. Like I never fit in. Right. Right. Like. Where'd you go to school? I went to a school called Friends School in Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. My brother went there. Yeah, I went to Friends. Yeah. Uh, I went to Friends for yeah. 10 years. From, yeah. From 3K through 8th grade. Okay, so... And then friend, I went to UAD for two years. But just to give some, some context. Yeah. That, right. Friends is a private school. Yeah. Mostly black at that time. Mm-hmm. My class was always mm-hmm. 95%. We, we sometimes had a white kid in our class, mm-hmm. right? Um, Quaker school. Quaker school. Quaker yeah. school, right? Nobody was and, friends there. It was right. kind of weird. Oh, they weren't friends. Kind of weird. It was... 
they they thought they wanted us to be, and maybe many people were friends. Maybe I just didn't have any friends. I think I just didn't. Yeah, have when, any when they were very, they had many. Friends. I felt like an outsider, and I felt like I didn't have friends. Yeah, like right? I, I didn't. But when you realize that, when yeah, you I didn't fit into that. But I was yeah. cool with all their parents because right. you know they got to invite you to their birthday party. Right, like, right. You can't not invite somebody in a sixteen-person class to a birthday party. Right. You can't only invite fifteen. That light skin dude, don't invite him. Yeah, no, it's me. <laughs> it is I, the <laughs> light skinned kid you didn't want to invite to yeah. your birthday party. Who's sitting in your kitchen talking to your mom? Right, right. Like that's me. Yeah. And so that was fine. Right. And then it turned out like in my mock elections, um, you know, like the seventh grade, like yeah. you know, who's I got like all of the most likely to succeed type really? things. Yeah. And I was like, Y'all don't even like me. Why are you Right. Is this like the birthday party that everybody's gotta win something? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I mean like I think that in retrospect, right. I just didn't know and they didn't know how to not, how to like respect somebody, something that was going Different. against the current. Right, right. And not even but, on some like radical shit. Like I wasn't right. that, but yeah. you know. So I, I think, but I think, I think when you, you know, when you, when you, when you accept that you're different, right, um, I think you start to see some of the similarities, right? I think you start to make connections with folks. It might take a while to see that, what but I mean? think, what do you say? What do you mean? So what I mean, what I mean is that when you when you when you kind of embrace who you are, right, and that takes a while for everyone. Um, yeah, I haven't done it. Yet. You haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a constant action that you work. Active on. choice for sure. Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 some days you do, and some days you don't, right? Sure. Um, and so, yeah, so there's some of us where you accept yourself even more, and embrace yourself more, and there's some where you're just like, who the heck am I? Or I don't know why I would do this, right? right. Uh, or why am I struggling in this area? I must be X, Y, or Z. I'm not good at whatever, right? Yeah. I, I think that when you when you embrace when you embrace that too, that like that okay, I, I'm different. Uh, you know, I accept myself most days. Some days I don't, or whatever. Um, I think it, I think I think yeah. I think you can see a commonality between yourself and other people because other I, people. I hear that. Even even, even though even though, might, even though they might try to act a certain way, because we all try to act a certain way. Um, I think I think that you are. In this moment, suffering from a certain amount of uh, experienced revision. Experienced revision. Go ahead. Experienced revision. Revision. Yeah. revision. Uh, because when you're ten, mm -hmm. that's not you don't have that thought. It doesn't go that way. Mm -hmm. When you're an adult and you right. look back at it, and you're like, "Wow, all of this was teaching me." Blah 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 blah. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. you right, right, for yeah. sure. Right, right. But when you're when you're a kid, all you're sitting there thinking about is like. Let me try harder mm -hmm. to get. I got my first job when I was eleven, right? And then I bought a pager because I was like, "That's why." Because like I didn't. Every all the other kids had two lines, two phone lines. Like they had their line or like the office line that they got to use, and then their parents had the main line, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They all had two lines. I didn't have two lines. Right. I said I figured the reason the girls aren't calling me is because they don't want to talk to my mom and have that awkward conversation. Yes. So if I get a pager, yes. I can just call them. They can page me, I can call them. It would be great. So I get, so summer, uh, this is like summer between sixth and seventh grade. So you fifth discover the sixth, use of fifth, the pager. Fifth and sixth grade. Yes. Summer, summer between fifth and sixth grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Come back <laughs> next year, got a pager. Right. Nobody pages me. By December, mm -hmm. by January, something like that, right. like everybody's starting to get cell phones. I'm like, oh shit! Now, now I got now the reason I, you're not calling me because you don't have a cell phone. It's because I don't have a cell. Because I don't have a pager. You have a right. cell phone. And that's awkward for you. You don't talk to the broke boy. <laughs> so I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna work again this summer. Right. Right. And I'm gonna go get a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Then they all had Tommy jeans. I ain't had no Tommy jeans. I had the old Tommy jeans. Well, actually, I did have Tommy jeans, but I had last year's Tommy. Right. And it had a new Tommy jeans. The new Tommy jeans had the logo like right down your crotch. Right. I only had the one in the back pocket. Right. I remember. Travis, I remember yeah, to yeah. this day. Yeah. To this day. Yeah. And there were people in the lunchroom that were pointing at a dude's Tommy logo mm -hmm. on his crotch. That was very exciting for them. <laughs> I want that kind of attention. Right. I'm going to go get a job. Right. Again. Right. Right. I'm going to go get these Tommy jeans. What all of this ends up teaching me, though, right. 
I can look back at 33, right. 32 and be like, yo, I have an, an unflagging, like an unflappable work ethic. Mm -hmm. I work for everything that I want. Right. I don't expect anyone to give me anything. Right. And I've recognized through the course of all of those things, over the course of all of those years, that through the work that I've done, I have found people who respected who I was and what I brought to the table. Right. Right. And so now I have a tribe. Mm -hmm. Of people who over the who can who can right, call your, back your, your people. To, like people today that call yeah. and check in on me that were at the first job I worked when I was eleven because they were just impressed that the fact that an eleven year old was doing this right right yeah so yeah. today I can absolutely say oh my god yeah listen you just got to work hard for it kid mm -hmm. but the truth of it is that I was wrecked and depressed and trying to figure out any way to fit in and feel welcomed by any sort of village because I think right. fundamentally humans want to feel like they're a part yeah. of the village yeah. So, which is why Detroit matters so much. Right. Go ahead. When I was in LA and San Francisco, I consistently yeah. felt as though I was living in spaces that were not, they were, they were, they were integrated. Mm -hmm. Listen, I never lived through segregation, so I'm always very careful with what I'm about to say. Right. I, I firmly believe that any space that erases your culture is not a space you should have to be in. Right. Separate is fine if it is equal. Right. The problem was not the separate, it was the equal. Right? right? Mm -hmm. LA is great. LA is diverse, LA is welcoming. There are certainly spaces that you want to be careful of. There are certainly spaces where you will feel like an other if you are not uh, one of them. Right. But even in those spaces, you are in fact welcome so long as you can ascribe and assimilate to their value structure mm -hmm. and, to, and erase your culture and make clear to the, to the people who control that space. If you can make clear to the people that control that space that you ascribe to their value set, yes. which fundamentally includes whiteness, even right. if we never say it, right. then they know that you can never be superior in that space and therefore you are welcome to be there. Right. I'm not interested in those spaces. Right. I'm not interested in a space that I have to leave my culture at the door in order to stand in. That's right. whack. So a, lot, a term we, we use a lot in the, in this show is uh, uh, is white validation. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's and so what that's Bill Cosby is, was on. Who was that? As he, show. Yeah. <laughs> Respectability politics joke. It's fine. Good. Cool. <laughs> um, but the point is, is that when you feel like you have to take away from who and what you are to 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 appeal. To the white masses, or you know, um, whomever you're trying to, yeah, with. yeah. So that's so, why I wear sweatpants most days. Right, I got you. Sweatpants, just the that's your, that's your pro Listen, protest. Listen, no, it's not even that. It's not even a protest, man. Look, I worked in corporate America for a long time. You did? Yeah. Okay. I spent seven years in biotech. Biotech at Fortune 100, environmental consulting. Okay. I mean, I know that. Had to wear a lot of things, right, in order to be respectful. Mm -hmm. of those spaces in order to seem as though I belong in those spaces. Meanwhile, um, again, mm -hmm. it seemed like no matter what I did, I never belonged. Right, right. Right? Yes. The best I would get, the best it ever felt like I got was a golf clap for how well I had put the costume on. <laughs> right? Right. Man, right. he's, it's, man, it's, he's it's so well-dressed. Yeah. When, you, when, when people say false validation. niggas in suits are well-dressed, what yeah. they are saying Often, yes. I got lectured on generalities earlier today. Okay. It has often felt to me personally mm -hmm. when I've heard that that it is not actually that they think that that the thought is he's well dressed. Often right. the thought is he is wearing this very well. Yes. Which is different than he's well dressed. Right. He is wearing this outfit. Yeah. That is not of him. Right. He very just, well. He doesn't like, belong. He is and then a, a lot good hanger yeah. for that suit. I'm not yeah. interested in that. And a lot of times, it, it, when you're in a particular job, mm -hmm. I remember seeing, I remember experiencing that at General Motors and GE or yeah. every, everywhere, even at Wayne State, um, you know, people would make comments to where they're implying that you're doing well for a job you're not supposed to have. You speak so well. Yes. Let me tell you something. Ah. Uh, Don't I, ever tell me I speak well. Yeah. You know what? Is the thing, the thing that's interesting is the is African American vernacular English has as many syntactic rules mm -hmm. as the King's English, right? Which we and yet, if I speak, speak King if, if, if I speak A V E A K A E bonics, mm -hmm. very, if I'm fluent in yeah. it, I could be a a PhD level, right? 
and perf- like that level of like practitioner of mm-hmm. African American vernacular English, mm-hmm. and I am still going to be judged based on my ability to, to to control the king's tongue. Right. right. I'm not interested in that paradigm anymore. Right. Yeah. Because what I found out is that I wore suits. I was uncomfortable. I didn't like it. I feel fat. I don't. I like things that flowy, man. I'm trying right. to trying right. to eat later. Like right. I don't right. want to worry about yeah busting anything. Right open for anyone and I want to be able to eat whatever I want right and why would I, if, if I'm going to do all this and you're still going to look at me like I'm a nigga right. I might as well just wear sweatpants then right. like if I was going to have to prove with my mind and my moment every time then I might as well just wear sweats to your establishment right. why would I dress up right. for you to then look at me like oh, you passed this test yes. wait for the next one yes. fuck out of here yeah. right. which is which t- most of us, uh, at some point when we were in corporate America, or even in the beginning of the entrepreneurial ecosystem, mm-hmm. we felt like we had to, to, you know, jump through those hoops. Yeah. Right. We, we had to, and that, and and we also, you know, we felt unworthy. Right. Mm-hmm. We felt very the imposter unworthy. syndrome at a minute. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. For sure. And so, um, I guess my question to you, kind of talk to about to to everyone out here about. The steps you took in, in, in being you and being you loudly and, and, and your time in the entrepreneurial space. Right? You said something about LA and where everyone could, they, you'd be in a certain space, but they, you had to, to, to look and, and sound a certain way. So, how did you kind of bust through these different, these different times in your life to get to where you are now here? It's so wild because I, I feel like I've, I've gotten this question a number of times yeah, throughout man. my life. And every time I feel like my the answer I want to give is the same, and I always give a different answer than I'm going to give you now, I'm going to give you the, the actual answer. Mm-hmm. I've never thought about it that way. Mm-hmm. The funny thing is, like, when you're doing it... Right. You're not thinking about it. You're not thinking no, about it. Not. You're not sitting there saying, look at all these barriers that I've right. busted through. Right. Like, there, man, that was a glass ceiling or a door or... A, a brick wall and everything could be glass and you ran right through it and I was like yeah but it was only one row of bricks thick. Right. like what do you what do you mean not you only running through one one row I, I thought yeah. I was supposed to be running through four or five six rows right now right. So because that, everything in my life no, here, yeah. here's the answer to your question yeah. I have never been able psychologically like right. at, at a pathological level I've never been able to appreciate the things that I've accomplished when I accomplished them oh gotcha because I've never felt, because I've always felt like there was more work to be right. done. Right, I've always felt like I haven't arrived. Right, like, great, that's a cool check. Right, that check is late. Right, it's how it every check I've ever gotten in my life felt late. Right, I'm not grateful for this check. This check should have been here three and a half years ago. Right, I'm on to three. I'm three checks ahead. Right, right, and yeah. that's not even the same. I mean, it might be ten dollar checks. I'm not even saying that these like are, this is money. Right, I'm just saying that like from a from a position of like feeling it. Right. I don't know. I, I've never. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yes. I'm not. Like, oh my God! I'm terrible. Right, 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 right. But I'm also definitely not sitting here like, I've man, arrived. I, I've arrived. Yeah. Y'all better listen to me. Right. What I've realized is that I could die tomorrow. Right. And so the work that needs to get done today is gonna have to get done. Right. And the impact that I like, it's not, I'm not waiting until tomorrow. To make an impact. So, what about the question of what? What about being comfortable? Being comfortable with being uncomfortable. I'm, yeah, I'm never comfortable. Right. So, when did you become comfortable with being uncomfortable? Was there a point? That presumes that there was ever a point that I was comfortable. Right. That presumes that I've had a time in my life when I've said to myself, "Man, getting static might need to shake this up again." Right. Never had that. Never had that. Right. I mean, from a personal life place, my mm-hmm. pops is on strike. Like I'm first, like pre eight doesn't matter. My pops is on strike with the Detroit newspaper from the time that I'm yeah. six until the time that I'm twelve, right. plus or minus or eleven. Yeah, I remember that. right. I remember that. I, I, I'm in a private school where I don't have any friends, right? And we're more poor than we should have been given the educational position of both of my parents. Yeah, house full of I books, totally, house full of love. So yeah. grateful to both yeah. of them. I totally get that. Learned how to write poetry from my dad. Without him ever telling me he was doing it, right. like mm-hmm. I'm br- like brilliant yep. human beings, and I'm grateful for it. That said, right. they split when I'm 14. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I'm still not comfortable. I'm now at a new school. I'm at U of D. I'm wearing these suits. I'm now yeah. around for the first time in my life. 
predominantly white people. Right. Like I'm never. I didn't know white people were the majority in this country until somebody told me, and I was like, Nah, dog. I'm like, what you mean? I'm a Lafayette and Saint Albans. I don't see any of them. You right. Think, what, are you saying? what do you mean they're the majority? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Lies. <laughs> um. Now that you would be, and I'm like, oh shit, they, they are. They, it's a lot. Yeah. A lot of white people. Uh, parents are splitting during that time. I turn 16. I go to see home. I'm at sea home for a year oh. and two weeks. Somebody moved to Birmingham. My mom moved to Birmingham so right. me and my younger brother could be good us. public schools. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because there wasn't well, money. Well, suburbs. And, yeah, and post, post split. There's not money to send me to uh, yeah, private school. Private school yeah, right? right? So, so next best thing, yep. super yeah, white, yeah. very good, very well-funded public yeah. school. Yeah. So now I'm at sea home. It's nicer than UAD was. Yeah. Right? Yes. But I'm not one of 10 black kids out of 1,000. Right. Right? A small little ant crawling across the face of a flashlight. That's how it felt. Mm. Um, Good imagery. I'm a writer. <laughs> so, I, I'm not doing well. well yeah. I'm, I'm doing fine, I guess. Right. But I'm having migraines three, four times a week. I'm sick. Like, that's the way my body responded to stress during yeah. my teenage years and yeah. the stress of my parents' divorce and just like being a teenager yeah. and still not. You know, understanding this social dynamic thing for real, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm sick. They're saying I hate high school. They're saying I need to repeat my senior year, right. the third week of my senior year, because I've missed so much school, Ooh. right? So now I'm. By the way, because I'm a, a, a maniac, I'm running a radio station in my basement, right? Because I built a computer to play video games. And then immediately got super interested in all the business around gaming, the business of this community, the business of this experience. What does that look like? This is you know 15 years ago, 16 years ago. Right. Um, but I'm fundamentally uncomfortable. Like I'm in pain for eight hours a day sometimes, mm -hmm. just having migraines. Yep. This is like now I'm up. It's 3 a.m. But I slept eight hours today. I'm not. I'm not going to sleep. I'm, I'm up now. Yeah. Right? What can I Google? There's no one left to play games with. Anymore. So now I'm figuring out how to build a radio station or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, they're gonna they're gonna tell me I need to repeat senior year of high school. I'm like, no, nah, that's not gonna work for me. Had a job offer in Chicago. Someone wanted to effectively absorb my radio station, mm -hmm. so I moved to Chicago, Naperville technically, not Chicago. Turns out, I thought Naperville was like Royal Oak. Naperville is like Lansing. Oh. So <laughs> I go to Chicago. Mm -hmm. Except not Chicago, Maybe. because neighbor Lansing, because right. Lansing. Right. What, what's what's the little? It starts with a O. City outside of Lansing. Oh, that is Okemos. Not, there you go. Okemos, yes. Okemos is yeah. where I'm at. Yeah. Okemos, yeah. Illinois. Yeah. Right. And I'm living in this dude's house. I work, his the office is in the basement. Right. I don't drive. I'm 17 years old. I'm in Illinois. Right. Right. That worked out well. He dropped a few uh, every time I do this type of thing for you peoples at me, and I told him to buy my train ticket home. Came back, started college early. Now I'm 17, would have been my second semester senior year. I'm in college at OCC. Right. Still don't drive. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like a baby baby. And I'm still living in Birmingham. Yes. Right? Yeah. I'm now a high school dropout. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out how to, what it like what it even is. I'm still working in gaming. I'm still doing you know I'm running a team or whatever. I always had something that I was working on. Mm -hmm. But like that's so you now have me. You now have life story. It was rinse and repeat from there until 2021. 20, yeah. Add poetry in. I started like doing a lot of performance poetry right in that, back in that era. But um like where where in that was I comfortable? Mm -hmm. Like I don't have a baseline for comfort. Gotcha. Gotcha. It, so. I, I, don't know, I have a baseline for joy. Okay. Which I lost sight of for a while. Right. And so I'm saying it to myself more than to you right now. Yeah. But never had a base level for comfort. I don't know what that's supposed to feel like. I've right. been looking for that my whole life. Right. Are you still looking for it? Or yes. is it just like, are you looking for it less? I no. Mean, so you're focusing on I'm looking, joy? I am looking for comfort. Okay. Because for me, comfort is, is stability. Okay. I've never felt stable since. I haven't felt stable ever in my life that I know. Do you think you ever will feel stable? I hope so. I really you hope so. Ask, do you think you ever will? And I answer, I really hope so. Mm. So, I'll say this. Yeah, it's St tough. stability for me. Yeah. Uh, Lafayette and St. Albans. Yeah, it's cross street from the King home. Mm -hmm. Heard a lot of gunshots. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. If I, I, I 
I can't find any of them. Right. Nope. It's the same thing. It's right? Very similar to so, how I grew up. So, when I say stable, yeah, I want to be more clear. What I mean is safe. Okay. I haven't felt safe. Right. Maybe ever. Right. And it's all different ways. It's not I just... I feel safe like I can fight. Right, right, right. But I don't right. feel safe like it's going to be okay. Right. Other than... I believe that it happened for a reason, and thus it must be okay. Like intellectually, yeah, I yeah, think right. it's okay. Right. Right. In my heart, like yeah. I don't think it's okay. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I tell everybody in my life to text me when they get home. Right. Because I don't believe it's okay. Right. I don't want to put that on my my tribe. Right. But I don't know. But I can't go to sleep. Right. If I don't know my people are okay. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like no, I do. So I want to get to that point. I want to get to a point where I can see who I look like in the mirror if I'm not terrified. Right. All the time. Right. But I don't know how to. So. But it hasn't broken me yet. So. Right, right, right. So, so we'll so, just keep working. Right. So I, I. So you can talk to me about the accomplishments. I, you know, I don't care about none of that shit because I'm not safe yet. Right. And that, in actuality, I, um, I think that the, you know, the bigger question to answer for each of us is, when do we feel like? We are okay or safe with ourselves. Nipsey felt safe in front of his store. Right. 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 And that, you know, and we know what happened there. Right? Yeah. I mean, and he should have felt safe. Yes. Yeah. Because he had seen every rung on the ladder that he climbed up. He didn't get birthed into no rung above zero. Right. He climbed every rung of that ladder and did it the right way. Didn't leave a trail of destruction. Didn't leave a trail of bad stories. Can't, you can't find somebody on this planet right now to say something truly bad about Nip. Yeah. You probably can find somebody he hurt their he hurt their feelings. Right. That's different. Right. Right. You right. can't. F- so like, I don't know how I'm gonna feel safe. Right. And that's one of the challenges of being black in tech. Right. And one of the challenges of being black in America. And one of the challenges of being black in, in any, entrepreneurship in any, in any space in this country. Yeah. In a lot of ways, because the truth of it is that I could delude myself into telling you, listen, I have X amount of money in the bank. Right. I have X amount of prospects at this point in my life. I know that this company that, that we're, I'm super excited about, I love my company. Mm-hmm. I'm super excited about what we're doing, right? right but, but if the company were to fall flat on its face, once I made sure that all of my employees, which I stress out about every day, right. are okay, yeah. right? I can go get a job. I'll be okay. Right. I'll be able to pay my bills. Mm-hmm. And yet, I don't feel safe. Right. I don't feel safe at all. And that is one of the threads that I, I think we talk about the least. About feeling safe? Amongst black entrepreneurs. Right. The underlying because effect it's, of it's, PTSD and, or whatever, however you describe what you carry. Right, right. right. As having grown up in this country. Yeah, yeah. Po- post-slavery traumatic disorder. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Which is PSTD, but it's fine. Uh, post-traumatic slave disorder, fine. We, yeah. we fixed it. So, I, I feel like there's a discussion that doesn't get had, and I don't know how to have it, mm-hmm. if I'm being honest. Right. With people about saying, yo, like, you, you can't just walk in a room and be like, hey, man, so let's go like 17 layers deep on your psyche and talk about your deepest fears. Like, it doesn't really work that way no. in a public discourse. Right. But every every person I've talked to, I can feel this energy. In, yes. Which is why I care about Detroit. Right. Because I never felt like any, because I can't, I can't work with people who can't respect that part. Right. Right. Yes. That's why I choose. That's why, from a personal life, I've chosen to date black women. It's why, in right. my life, I've chosen to surround myself with black people because I recognize, and it's important to me, okay. that I that I can have a breakdown mm-hmm. and not have to explain why. Right. 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 I don't. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't tell you why yeah. Trayvon right. dying makes me feel scared. Right. I don't live in Florida. Right. I don't live in no gated communities, and I'm not walking outside right now. Why should I be terrified? Right, and I can't tell you why. Why I, if I have to explain that to you right. from a personal partnership, right. from a right. business partnership, from right. any level of partnership, if I'm inviting you into me and saying you should invest your time and energy in me, and I'm invest my time and energy in you, right? I can't do that exchange if I have to explain who I am. Right. So, so your tribe that you that yeah. you roll with, yeah, and the people that you work with, do they do they understand you? I think they try. I mean, they try. I mean, I think they understand the the, the beats I'm talking about in this moment. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, yes. And to be very clear, I've met a number of of white people in my life who very much 
at least honor and own that they don't understand it. Right. 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 Which is all I, I don't need you to. I don't need you to know every moment. I'm not asking you to be here for every moment. I'm asking you to be here for this moment fully. Right. You can do that as long as there's an accountability and awareness. Yes. But generally speaking, my tribe looks like me. Right. My tribe is as inquisitive as I am. I ask about them as much as they ask about me. And right. we both, all of us, are trying to make sure that we cover each other's blind spots. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. That we cover each other's blind spots. Does that make you feel a bit more? Um... So, so again, uh, I think I think the success. Let me back up. I think the success and uh, us are kind of feeling like we're arriving is 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 um, accepting ourselves like, internally. Because I, I think that again, being black in America or being black anywhere in the, in the world, you'll have you know you'll, people always look at you like okay, yeah, you can go ahead and put on that suit, but you, you know. That's really not for you. I'm, I'm glad you're trying to pretend, right? Um, but I, I, I think that, I think that that once we, like, we acknowledge that and accept that, that's the way the world is. Yeah. You know, that subconsciously, by the way. Yeah. Ninety-eight percent of the participants in the structure that we have now both talked about a lot mm-hmm. don't know they're a part. Right. No, you're right. Like zero like, recognition. I, I do. I do. Th- I do. This, this is I do think. Enough. But I, but I do think that percentage. Is I think uh, is shrinking. I do think I think I think we're getting closer to this conversation, that conversation we were saying for time as opposed to like five years ago or six years ago. Yeah. I think even just when, when you look at like Obama being president and flipping and then that was Trump, it's like wait a minute, right? It, it's you know we we had a we, we had a you know yes we can and all that kind of stuff and, and we felt like we felt a little safer, right? I mean, the moment you talk yeah, about yeah, but that was but Obama was one of the most like listen yeah if you go deep. You, yeah. Yo. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm super grateful. Right. That all of the time that I spent telling my little brother growing up that he mm-hmm. could be anything he wanted to be mm-hmm. turned out not to be a lie. Right. Because Obama got elected, so we know right. it's possible. Right. We have definitive proof that it is possible. Right. I also want us to acknowledge that the system, that the game, how yeah. is this? The game is the game. Right. Yeah. Right. So do you, you play? watch The Wire? No, man. I have not. So that's when I was in engineering school. I just said bump it. I hear you. I know. I, my friends say they, they can't trust people who have not watched The Wire. And and you still have? How long ago did they say that? Like yesterday? Man, I haven't watched Super Bowl in like three years, man. But I didn't watch the Super Bowl either. That's not the same. Yeah, that's a false equivalency, bro. I, I, <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't watch Go much TV. Watch. I yeah, hear that. Yeah. This is high. This is high cinema. Hey, where can I get? Where can I watch the wire? HBO. Okay. I will buy you. All right. You want VHS or DVD, bro? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what DVD. DVD. I will it, text me your address. I'm gonna order it on Amazon tonight. Oh my gosh. The wire. I would. Oh, dude. And then I will pass it on to other people, so it will be, impact. Others. Yeah, man. All right. Pay it forward. Anyway, we got, we, yeah. Listen. The game is the game. Is yes. my point. Yes, Obama. It was so great. I'm so glad. Right. Right, 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 right. And I would love to meet him. Michelle right. is really my hero. Right. But it's all good. Right. And all I'm saying is that, like, acting like that was a fundamental change. Mm-hmm. Have you, do you listen to Malcolm Gladwell? Revisionist, have, you, have you listened to Revisionist History? No. So he has a, an episode in season one where he talks about what happens in societies that make radical decisions as a voter base. Right. Right? Because the way voting happens, as we know, yeah, forty. Yeah, forty percent of people mm-hmm. who really feel one way. You got forty percent of people who really feel the other way, right? right. And then you got twenty percent of people in the middle right. who can flow either way, depending on their generational bent, depending on their economic position at the time of the vote, yeah. anything like that. What has happened in many many spaces that I'm glad we'll kind of like list these out, right? We see a, there's a trend wherein once a culture has voted for the thing they know is right, right. It justifies them voting for the thing they actually wanted to do. Okay. Right? I voted for Obama. Mm-hmm. I'm not racist. I just think Trump is the better candidate. It's how that rationale right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. In right. those spaces, you see tremendous times. Right. Between the last time they voted for what was, quote, right, right. and the next time they do it. Until it fades from their memory. Until they can no longer say, I just voted for Obama. Right. They aren't voting for the next Obama, bro. Right. It's not going to happen. 
I love Cory Booker and, and Kamala Harris, and I really want them to be successful. I don't. I, I love that they exist. Right. To be clear, I'm not endorsing anyone's politics in this moment. Right. Um. I don't trust prosecutors, though. Um, <laughs> and that said, I think that Elizabeth Warren is our best shot because we haven't voted for a woman. Right. Uh, I, and I think that I don't. I don't, I don't think a black person is going to carry the vote. I don't even think. I don't even think a black man is going to carry the vote. In this I think what I was, what my point was was that uh, you know, we were talking about people being aware of that you know, that, that this is a game and aware that um, and right <laughs> aware, aware that uh, that um, no matter what we say or do, um, you know, was was still look, be looked at by external forces as as Negro, as black, as Negro, yeah. whatever, right? You, yeah. So. The point is, is that I, I'm saying it was a false security with, uh, that a lot of people had. No, exactly. With, with that Obama. And it's, and a, and it's it, a false security. And it, but I'm saying it was a big slap in the face, but really it's just reality when Trump got elected. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. That's, 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 that's no, I, I agree with you. Yeah, so, I agree with you. My point is only that. So that, so that safety, that, that, that terror. So, so some people might have been really blind and they might have felt less terrified when Obama was president. Oh, yeah. I, get, I get what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. And I think that that was just always such. False equivalency, but the truth of it is that a white president could have spoken more about race than Obama could. Yes. So Obama, felt like Obama right. could yeah. say everything like, as a black like man, which was like something that yes. was so, impr- so so important to see. Right. Was, to see the president say things as a black man. Yes, it was amazing. However, we would be lying to ourselves if we didn't honor or at least acknowledge that he didn't say that much about black men. Yes. He just said it as a black right. man. Right. He, wa- he walked that. And that was cool. super powerful to see. Yeah. But like, I didn't hear him talking about black men. Right. Or black women, frankly, it was very rare, right? Mm-hmm. The bo- uh, we, how many days did we listen? Did we sit there and say, "Bring our girls home" before he spoke about Boko Haram? Right, that's true. That's true. And that's right. the tip of the tip of the spear regarding his foreign policy in right. general. But here we are. Right. Very, he said it as a black man. You're right. pointing to me like this behind the book, which means that I'm probably talking too much. <laughs> you should not. So we're, don't, we're, invite, don't give me, don't, don't yeah, give me a yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I do. That's why I brought you on here, man. Um, and we're going we're gonna to try to, we're going to go over a bit, just a bit. Just, we'll, we'll wrap it up in like five minutes. I'm trying to look at the, uh, the owner. Oh, she don't have a pistol on her person right at this very moment. So You'll be all right. She's going to put you in her book so <laughs> We're going to try. So, um, I know we we talk about a lot of things. She Somebody, might shoot you. She might shoot me. I don't want to be. Just shoot me. Just, just I don't. Run. I don't. Run. I I don't want to be liable. It's my. I, 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 I put that last statement in there just in case. <laughs> yeah, I want to get shot. You be out. Okay, good. Uh, you get shot every day. <laughs> Tough, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe. I'm only making this joke because you've never seen Paid in Full, so like it's just. Oh it's no, the references. Oh, so Paid in Full, The Wire. The wire. Okay. State property. State property. It's a good State one. State paper soldiers. Hmm? Paper soldiers. Yeah, paper soldiers are solid also. Oh, man. We got a list. We're going to get you Thank together. You. We'll Thank get you together, you. Please, please. Aubrey. I, I need that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but let's, okay. You know, you are where you are today. Sure. Right? Um, and again, that could change tomorrow. Yeah. Right? Or we, we, tomorrow isn't promised as well. Right? What would you want? What would you want people to hear to to deal with that that terror and go after mm. what they want and be themselves, right? How, how if you could tell them, right? If you make that ninety eight percent, tell them, hey, 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 you know, let's you know, look inside yourself, right? You know, and, and bring that out, and don't try. It. To well, so the question is, what do I want people to know? Yeah. How, yeah, they face that terror. Yeah, and, 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 and circles, be themselves. And the, be cir- themselves. the circle, the circles uh, are sweet because they end where they begin, right? Be yourself. Everybody else is taken. Right, right. And understand that there's a point in your life coming. Sooner than you are ready to accept, mm-hmm. where you will feel purposeful. Mm-hmm. Hold on to that moment, because right. that's the only thing that matters. Right. 
Like, whatever fills you. There are moments when I had dinner with uh, with a with a, a, a dude a few days ago when I was in, I was in LA last LA last week. I had dinner with a with right. a, a colleague. It's crazy to call him a colleague. It doesn't really matter. Here we go. Um, we were talking about Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Oh. He was saying that so his his son is twelve, mm-hmm. and his son is very good at Fortnite. Like, relative to the field, is very good at Fortnite, but he's 12. Mm -hmm. And he was basically saying, look, if he wasn't great at it, his mom doesn't want him to play as much as he does, he's great at this game. If he wasn't great at this game, I would have told him to stop playing a while ago. Mm -hmm. Don't... I was was so happy to hear that. I wish that he looked more like me. Mm -hmm. Because I want more people who look like me to have people support things that they're great at. Right. And not tell them that they need to play in the box because the box is what keeps them safe. When we have statistical data that shows us that the box doesn't actually keep us much safer than playing outside the box. Like, it's kind of all dangerous. Yes. Right? And if it's all dangerous, go have fun. Right. If it's all dangerous, go be great at something. Because like playing it safe isn't a guarantee at all. And well, it, well, I got a, I bought a, a, a hoodie. You know, right. I like my hoodies. Yes, I do. It says graduation caps aren't bulletproof. Right. Go be great at something. Right. Because then every moment you spent here, mm-hmm. no matter how many minutes you get, you will have done so with the knowledge of your greatness. There is nothing more powerful on this earth than feeling great at something. And I mean great. I don't mean like I'm good. I don't mean like they keep telling me to play basketball because I'm tall. I don't mean that. I mean like greatness requires intention and outcome. Right. Otherwise, you are like valuable to them. That's different. I'm not talking about valuable to them. I'm talking about great. Find out what you're great at. Find time. Spend time in the spaces where you feel most powerful, because chances are there's some greatness there. Right. Find that space, yeah. because that allows you to say, I still to this day don't believe when people tell me they're my friend. Mm. In this moment right now, Aubrey, mm. if you said, Niles, I am your friend, I would say, cool, thanks, appreciate that. <laughs> You're my man too. If you got in a fight right now, mm. probably I'd be involved in that. Mm-hmm. Like I would probably be on your side, right. it would be us, I will talk about it later with you. Why did we get in the fight? Yeah. It would be a whole thing. But I wouldn't call you if I was hurt. Right. Because I don't trust that you really care. Mm. And that has nothing to do with you. That has everything to do with me. Right. And me being a crazy person. Right. I think everyone feels that way at times. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, but exactly. Yeah. So, But my point is that I don't trust people. But I trust God, and I trust myself. Right. And the moments when I feel connected to God are not, surprisingly, moments when I feel like I'm standing in my purpose. Right. And moments when I feel like I'm great. Which is what? At something. Right. And that is the, that is the version of myself. Right. No matter what religion or spiritual set right. or lack thereof that you are called to, the best version of yourself is the one that is standing in purpose. Right. And I, 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 to add to that, um, a lot of times we people get that and they realize that's what they need to do to feel fulfillment, right? To 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 live for their purpose, find their purpose, work right. at it, right? And 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 then a lot of times though it starts be, with kids. Right. Start at, start as right. as parents. But, but my point yeah, is you, ahead, you, you said intention and output. Yeah. So output outcome. Oh, outcome, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Outcome. So outcome a lot of times is not as big as our intention. Right? Even when you get it. When you get it. Your intention and your effort is, is, is this, and the and the outcome may not be might not match it, and so right. that builds. That's when you hire me. Anxiety and terror. Because what that and, sound, that sounds like a, a systems and a scaling problem. True, and I think everybody has that. But everybody's looking to figure out their purpose and they're working yeah. at it, or whatever. And no, more, I don't know if everyone is. No, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, at some point, I think I think everyone might think about it, and they might. Like, I think it might be a, fle- might be a fleeting the, thought. The people who are not working on it are going to have an existential crisis 
sometime in the future. Yeah, and, and, and everyone, I think everyone has that, you know, yeah. the age range, sure. range whatever. But my, my point is, is that when you, when you, when the, the outcome isn't what you want it to be or are comfortable or are pleased with, mm -hmm. it is those, that is, you know, in my, in my opinion, a lot of people face that, right? That's, and, that, and, and therefore that anxiety, and that, that fear in life, that imposter syndrome, that mm -hmm. all the things that can pop up, right? I, yeah, and you I, have, got, you I got you all have, of them. Yeah, and you have to, you have to live in that. And I, and so for me, um, I mean, you know, Things have happened. You're, I didn't. I didn't really. I didn't really add on to a lot of things you said. Very similar backgrounds. Yeah, right. Yeah. Never felt like I belonged. Whatever. Um, I always stood out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, parents were, were super uh, successful in, in their in their professions, social work, art, architecture. But you know, at times we had used car. Yeah. You know, so, point is, is that I have gotten comfortable. The, the, in, the part of me that grew up around playing the dozens wants to say something like, "Damn, you had carpet." <laughs> it was it was it was, it was Shaggy Dell from feel, the sixties, and it was off my floor in the eighties. But um, uh, point is, is that um, is that personally, is that I've gotten comfortable with with the outcome not being what I want it to be, and knowing wow. that that moment. Well, so so uh, that when I say, crazy. So when I say comfortable, I don't mean like I've gotten lax and say forget it. I'm just not going to do anything. Right. What, I, what I do feel, what I do feel comfortable. Like, at is is I don't I, I don't get pulled into that that that, that rabbit hole mm -hmm. of an anxiety. Now, I do have anxiety, right? But I don't go down the rabbit hole right, as much as I used to. Okay. Right. So I keep Good. I keep going at it to try to get that outcome. You know what I'm saying? I I don't give up. Where a lot of people when they when they when yeah. say I want to be in attention, mm -hmm. and I want to have this, this happen in my life. And they don't like in the you know, as entrepreneurs. That's why they're crazy. Is because they they, they you know um, as Janet can tell us you know when you hit, when you set out to do something right and it doesn't go your way or it doesn't go the way you picture it. Yeah. You so are, that's not greatness. Well, well, a lot of no, times, a lot of no, no, no. by the definition equate, I'm giving you, right? In intention plus outcome. Yeah. Plus outcome. Or that's not greatness. You like that a lot. Right. You want that to be great. Right. And that's fantastic. Do things you like as well. Mm -hmm. But greatness right. is, 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 is what I'm... Greatness is product market fit for humans. Right. Greatness is me saying, I think that if I do this, right. I can create five. Mm -hmm. I can, my expected outcome is five. Right? And when I do it, I get five or more. Full stop. How does that tie into your... Purpose that moment of, of realizing your that is that yeah. is the moment, and you get you get to define five, right. and you get to define your intention, right? right. So what I'm telling you is that oh, yeah. if I get to walk in a room yeah, yeah. and say my purpose, what I am here to do is to change one person's life, mm -hmm. one life mm -hmm. is now equal to mine. I only have one life. If I change one life, I'm net positive. On this earth, right. Period. Right? Change. Or at least I'm net zero. Right? right? If right. I change two lives, I'm net positive. Right. If I change three lives, I'm talking about That's multiples. Amazing. If I change ten lives, I'm an order of magnitude more valuable to the planet than I cost the planet. Mm -hmm. Right. And that might be my greatness. Right. My intention was to do that, and I did that. Right. There is not greatness without saying, I want to go do this, mm -hmm. and I did it. But you get to define what you're doing and right. what it means. Right. You get to, but like that to me is. But that changes though. That of changes. course. Right. So, of course, because you're not yeah. lazy. Right. Right. Well, so I'm, once you do one, you're like, oh, I mean, I can knock out two. And, and then lazy to me is is a lot of times is people throwing in the towel. A lot of times, hmm? lazy it, what precedes that is people say throwing in the towel. But a it's not always. Not always, but you know what I'm saying. <clears throat> Sometimes it's genuine. Like uh, I don't feel like doing anything. Sometimes but, it's just accepting that what you're doing is good enough. My mama, my mama corrected, my, mom, my mom's a man. So I told her mm -hmm. mom, we were talking about some logistical challenge, who knows, right? right Logistics, right. logistical, child of a grammarian, I never know the answer. I don't know the answer, do you have the answer? I, I, was freak out about this I think logistical is fine. Logistical? Yeah. 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 Talking about some logistical issue. Right. I'm like, well, if I come out that way, I can mm -hmm. just kill two birds with one stone. Right. My mom deaded the whole conversation. She's like, why would you want to kill birds? <laughs> and she said, why don't you just feed two birds with one hand? 
that sounds and here's like the ill here's the, like you here's the ill part <laughs> about feeding two birds with one hand yeah the amount of difficulty that it takes from go, to go from killing two birds with one stone to killing three birds with one stone is exponential but the ease of feeding three birds with one hand is so simple right that's that's great just Greatness is the scaling that happens when you decide that you want to be on the side that actually makes a difference. Yeah, it feeds. And changing yeah. the way you, you perceive this stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. You can feed a million birds with one hand. You Building. can't kill but two birds with right. one stone. Right, right, right. And then you just got dead birds. That sounded like a bad plan. That sounds like making outcomes that don't match your intention right. work. Right. That sounds like forcing yeah. square pegs into round holes and right. all types of other cliche idioms right. that don't actually have any place here. Yeah, because we know how to feed birds with our hands. But that's what I'm saying, though, is that is that the outcome, the outcome moves and it changes. If you, again, if you get stuck on the outcome and it's not what you want, but, but the outcome in, in my model, yeah, turns into where do I take my hand to feed the most birds? Okay, that is what changed about my outcome, right? Because I already found my intention, right? I already, I already changed it. Like, and it's the same act of yeah. killing two birds, right? right. It's like right. feed, but. But the one that scales, the outcome didn't change. Right. It's just about how do I take this message to everybody? Right. That's like saying, like, you know, again, I'm not gonna make this religious. Jesus right. didn't have to change his message. Right. Not to say the message a different way. Right. True. True. But it's the same message. Right. right. Whether or not you believe. Right, right. The the structure is the point, right? Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is that when you find your greatness, mm -hmm. it's about scale. Mm -hmm. Which means that it's not about my outcome was this and I feel like it should have been this. No, right. then your intention was wrong. And like right. this is right. the part of the challenge that changes. Right. You change yourself until you get the output you gotcha. want. And then it's about figuring out how to scale your greatness. Mm -hmm. And that's how you change the world. Yeah. That's what Nipsey was doing, by the way. Was scaling his greatness. Right. Yeah, he... Yeah, man, we got to finish up. I know. I mean, how much time did we, did we go? I were like an hour and 20 minutes. Hour and 20 it's minutes. about right. Okay. Okay. It's about right. So, how did, how, let's just briefly, briefly talk about how did Nipsey scale his greatness, like for that, that moment, where, he, where his so, greatness was obvious possibly to him and to others, and then boom, I'm going to do these things. All right. Nip, Nip scaled his greatness in my opinion, by having an intention mm -hmm. of owning his own work, yes, of not needing to succumb to the influence of, the, of a record li label or a record industry that is implicitly beset on profit, yes, but profit that doesn't actually return value. Like we talk a lot about what it means to spend a dollar in a black community and mm -hmm. how many times the dollar circulates a black community before it leaves, right? And it's even higher in ethnic communities. Uh, like non-black ethnic communities, right? Okay. So like if you spend a dollar in a Chaldean liquor store, mm -hmm. how many Chaldeans touch that dollar before it gets deposited in a non-Chaldean bank? Right. Right? Or does it just get deposited in a Chaldean bank? These right. are all very important questions. Right. Uh, black peoples mm -hmm. across this country mm -hmm. don't do a great job of keeping the money inclusive. Right. Right? Right. Which means that when you spend money with a black person, that black person rarely employs another black person that they're going to pay right. for whatever that product product was. Right. And then that money, once in the hands of the employee, goes to Coca-Cola in Atlanta, right. goes to whomever in wherever, goes right. to Apple in that's right. China, that's right. That's right. Like goes to all of these different spaces. Yeah. And so and one of the yeah. things that happens yeah. is when you hire black people, when you buy, when you buy property mm -hmm. and then hire black people, businesses to inhabit that property and those black businesses hire black people to work in those spaces mm -hmm. you start having chains of effect right. where every dollar now actually pays into four or five six different lives right right when we talk about scaling greatness yeah. what he recognizes is that he was able to attract mm -hmm. and with that attraction he returned lessons right if you listen to his music mm -hmm. despite being gangster rap mm -hmm. unequivocally so yeah. There was also never a message in there that didn't say, if you don't own your own, you're not your own. Mm. There wasn't a message in there that said, it's okay to be anything less than solid to the people around you, to hold down the people that love you, and to do everything you can to lift them up as right. well. Right. 
Right. There's not the, the like those messages aren't present. So yeah, as he scales, as his music reached more people and became the outreach ministry to the Church of Nip. Yes. Yep. He's in a lot of ways, in terms of then what he was also living. Right. Because it wasn't just that. Talk, it wasn't, wasn't just like talk, wasn't just a track. it wasn't just like I'm gonna make this anthem, this inspirational music, and then yeah. I'm gonna Creflo Dollar this shit back into my porch. Like right. that wasn't all he was doing. Right. 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 right? It was also coming back to his people. Right. He was also using that money to invest in people that looked like him. Mm-hmm. And, he was, and I think that there's a there's a value to recognizing how rare that is. Yeah. In a, in an industry built right. on I, shells yeah. and cards and smoke and mirrors and many other things that we could list here that are not solid. I think that's why people are grieving so much. Nipsey is what Nipsey is what Pac would have wanted us to become. If Pac is who we have all decided as a culture that he was, yeah. and that's a very different question because that yeah. was 20 plus years ago that he that he passed, yeah, and Pac had a lot of human things happening. Pac was also 25. Yeah, right. Right? Right. And he, he was, yeah, he was... So, I mean, yeah. again, yeah. all of it. Yeah. My point is only that Nip was the physical embodiment to me. Mm-hmm. As a fan, as a man, I got, I shook that man's hand one time. I do not pretend to know him. Right. As... Nip was what we want. Nip was, a, was what advocates of hip hop culture have been arguing we could be. be. Right. Yeah. And then he was since Pac and Big Right. 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 And right. why hip hop culture mattered. Right. And how it taught us. And how it wasn't all drugs and misogyny. Right. Right. The hope was that if we want to be real honest about America, most people's 20s, 18 to 25, 27, it's mm-hmm. about drugs and misogyny. Yeah. Like, fighting into it or fighting out of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it is that. We live in a patriarchy. Yep. Despite all efforts of those who oppose it. Right. And drugs are sweet when you're a kid, apparently. Like, I don't I'm not that guy, but like, that, if, you look at, if you look at the culture, right? right like, we right. can't argue that that's not like what it is. Or some kind of sure, so whatever right. the reason is, is, yeah. a, is a different a different discussion than True. I have. But my point is only that, like, we blame hip-hop and misogyny. Right. Like, country artists aren't doing coke. Yeah, I mean, And that's wild to me. Right. What is more interesting to me is those of us who make it out, and then we blame hip-hop, mm-hmm. like, hip-hop has guns. Right. Like, I mean, like, the music holds a pistol. Right. Like it's not concentrated poverty right. that holds a pistol. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like I just feel like hip hop gets blamed for so much. Right. And then, when it is implicitly reflected. Yes. Right? Yes. And, 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 and not and not, honest, honest and not all, and not and neither media. necessarily positive nor what I suggest that children right. ingest it. I'm yeah, not yeah, sitting yeah. here like proselytizing yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for hip hop. But one of the but, most honest mediums. But like it is a reflection yes. in a way that no other space is. So like when that culture creates something so unequivocally positive, right, coming from and serving that same space, right, like that's why I moved back to Detroit. Right. I get I get why you don't want to leave your hood. I get why you don't want to leave that space if that's where you feel like you have your greatness. If that's where you feel like your input and your outcome yep. can come together in a way that actually means something to you because money is great until you have it and then you realize it ain't shit. Right. Right. Right? So if you found your greatness, if that was his greatness, I'm mad that we got robbed of his greatness. Right. But it, I don't want to sound cliche, but it's, I think what you're talking about, you finding your greatness. I'm hoping that people look at Nipsey and they get inspired to find their greatness. You got something to contribute. Yes. No matter who you are. Right. You got something to contribute. Yes. You 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 are. Go back and listen. To, go back and I'm gonna send you some Nipsey stuff. Please. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send you I'm some. I'm gonna send recently, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, because because when you really like when you get past the fact that he that he mentions that he's got his pistol on him if you want action. Mm-hmm. When you get past that moment and listen to the next 14 bars of the verse, right. it's all positive. Right. And the truth of it is that he did, probably, often, and when rapping, oh, yeah. have his pistol on. Right. Gang member, not gang bang. But that right. don't change what it is. Right. right? right. And yet, understanding this, you know, we, 
we don't really like to embrace our own dualities. We like to make black people monolithic, even as black people. Yeah, right? yeah, that's a whole other so, like, yes. Yeah, I don't yes. have time. I know yeah. y'all, yeah. y'all running up against time. I get yeah. it. <laughs> you know, and I don't respect. I don't respect uh, Janet and, and. This is one of yeah. my favorite bookstores in the city. Right? Yes, I buy. This is like when I buy Christmas gifts. Mm -hmm. It's always gift cards. It's always books for me. This is like I, I do a lot of shopping here. Yeah, this 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 is definitely a jewel. Um, Facts. Yes, yeah. and I I, I, I want to see more people come here. Also, I mean they have so we're doing we're doing our little show here too. But they also again we, like I mentioned earlier, they have authors come in and they have they have. Well, why don't we can we Miss Janet can we bring you back on and you can help close this out and talk a little bit about what's coming up. This concept is dope, by the way. I'm letting you know now that like I am personally going to take this idea you have shown me of seeing podcasts recorded in spaces that matter locally yes. and I am please dem I am going to start demanding that people who want to do interviews and podcasts with me do so at a local business please do because I think that this is super this is amazing this is the right way to do this to me thank you because I mean we, we want to be we want to be relevant you know I want to be connected all right we're gonna well, and on that note, I'll, I'll sit up here and then, oh, yeah. Miss Janet, you can Let me get your mic for you, Mr. Aubrey. Thank, well, thank you. And if you could tell us a little bit about what's going on here at uh, Source Booksellers. Again, thank you so much. Thank you. You know, you know, I remember being in bookstores, you know, they're rare nowadays, they're just like large corporate things or they're small shops. <clears throat> and I've never really felt like, like, um, like a soul. In a bookstore, you know, I didn't feel really the character. It's a beautiful one's going on borders. Yeah, borders and wall ends, and I went to what the the, the big bookstore. John King. Yeah, so that that has that has. John King's got some got yeah. some spirits in there. Yeah, but this one has this one has a lot of character and it has purpose. I mean, it's not just to read books, and not even just to read nonfiction. It's to get good nonfiction that can help you understand this world better. So, Ms. Janet, if you could tell us a little bit about what's coming up. Um, we'd love to, to, to let people know out there. Okay. And again, thank you. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the conversation. It was pretty strong. Yes. Very yes. good. So one of the things that we do at Source Booksellers is that we have our good events that match the four major categories, five major categories of books that we have. Mm -hmm. So this month we are <clears throat> going to do some off-site events as well as here. Um, we are into our second session of our um, annual poetry workshop. So oh. every year during Poetry Month, we try to acknowledge the uh, poetry, rich poetry tradition in Detroit. Yes. So we have a gentleman, uh, Willie Williams, who runs our poetry workshops. And the idea is to have people come in and learn uh, and practice at least a part of the craft of poetry. Uh, right. Poets usually have lots of venues to do open mic and stand up and do the thing that they do. Uh, <clears throat> but we were trying to provide a place where people can really put hands on right. to the craft. <clears throat> so question, when, so when, when so is that? That's gonna be, um, the first one was last Saturday, this is this Saturday, which is April 13th okay. coming up, okay. at four o'clock, and each year he has a theme. Okay. Um, and along with that, uh, this year we are participating in the National Poetry in Your Pocket Day. Okay. So the idea on the 18th of April, everybody get a poem that you like or you want to share. Yes. Make a copy of it. Make sure you acknowledge who the poet is. Mm -hmm. Very Do important. That. Yes. Yes. And have it in your pocket, or you can have several copies. And when you meet somebody, you say, poem, poem, Poetry in Your Pocket, and hand it over. So Poetry in Your Pocket. Yeah. And okay. you can either stand there and read it out loud if you want, or you give it to somebody. We want, and this is going on all over the country because it's poem in your pocket day. Okay. Do you have a favorite poem? poem? No. <laughs> Whichever one I'm reading at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And then. Uh, yeah. We've got some more things yeah. going on too. So um, then we are going to be at the main library because we do a lot of partnering. Mm -hmm. uh, one of which is at the main library. Um, and we were are going to be there on the 24th yep. of April. Um, and the book is Boss Bride, and it's um, Sharia, I think it's Sharia, Jackson, who is the author of Boss Bride. Oh, excellent. Uh, and she was uh, with uh, Essence Magazine. Excellent. One, I think she still is. 
-hmm. And then we're going to be in Mary Grove. Mary okay. Grove uh, College has a uh, long history of probably 25 years now mm -hmm. of bringing in a national uh, figure of in liter in liter literature. Right. This uh, year, it's the book um, by you want to uh -huh, right there? Yeah, by uh, Elizabeth Acevedo. I think it's Acevedo, she says her yep. name. It's called Poet X. Okay. Thank you, sir. And The Poet X is a young adult uh, book. It can be read by anyone, but it's focused to the young adult. And um, she's going to be the speaker there, and we're going to be handling book sales there for Excellent. them as well. Is there a place that people can look all this information up? Yes, sourcebooksellers.com. Okay, sourcebooksellers.com. Yes. Is it also advertised on your social media as well? Yeah. Instagram, Facebook, email, website. And, and we also want to always encourage people to come here. Yes, that's come, our point. Mm -hmm. Come on in, yeah. have a conversation. With Janet or her daughter or anybody else here, the, the folks that are, are this is a this is a gathering place. This is a place. This is a space that the community comes to. So we want to encourage people check out things uh, and the dates and the events online. But come here and talk with people. Well, we're very interested in human beings. Yes, and I like we're those especially two. interested in adults. Most, so. in adult human beings. A lot of times, people say who hear that we have a bookstore, they say, "Oh, I have to bring my son and my daughter there." Like they put the burden on the children. Right. I feel it's a it's a adults read, children will too. Ooh, so we are really if that's not a message. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> now we love the little children, they're good. We yes. have we have books that are in our categories for the young right. children as well, but we like the children to be read to. So in the May, the Saturday before Mother's Day, we always have what we call mothers read out loud to others. Hmm. Now we're not trying to bring a bunch of children and mothers in, but we're bringing mothers whatever kind of mother they do is okay and they will uh, spend several hours reading out loud to anybody that comes into the store okay so we're going to have a little fake tree right here made of metal with okay. branches and stuff and they're going to sit underneath the tree on the stools and read out loud that to sounds anybody beautiful. that shows up and that's may you know what day that is yes uh it is going to be the saturday before mother's day okay. which is may baba they can look it up they can look it up i feel like saturday. i feel like mother's day is the 11th it could be. It okay. could be the 10th. So, okay. Yeah, the Saturday before yeah. Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. The point is, come here. Check this place. It's a special so next place. next week, we're having an author here who's going to be talking about uh, overrun Asian carp in the world. The problem of Asian carp. Really? Asian carp. Here. In the Great Lakes. Lakes. Yeah, yes. right. Yes, the book's just arrived problem. today. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you Can so we much. eat Asian carp? I don't know. I was, I was so just thinking that. We're going to find out. Can we? You like so? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. huh? Kind of like the dirt cleaning. No? Yeah. So it can't be. Catfish is delicious. You can't eat trying to phone a friend. What do you mean I can't eat catfish? I don't. <laughs> bottom feeders, like shrimp. Yeah. That's yeah. Bottom feeders. Like all, like all, all the fish that swim up there. Just fry them up. Yeah, no, no, all the fish that swim up at the top, mm -hmm. those are the ones you eat because all their food goes down there. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. All right. I'm going to shut this off. Are you shut, Kevin? Sure. I'm going to sign off. Thank you for listening to Anti Gravity Detroit. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank uh, you for having us. Now, thank you so much, sir. Amen. Appreciate it. It was deep and always, always thoughtful. You got a lot of kicking. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Jen, thank you All so right. much. All right. All right. Untape your phone, Arthur.